Hello, everyone. It's Miriam Ortiz Pino with More Than Organized here. I'm going to give you another version of More Than Organized Monday. A little bit of insight today on how to organize a project. Whatever the size of the project, there's kind of an overlying umbrella concept of how to run a project that I'm going to go over for you today. There's one, two, three, four five steps to running a project and I just want to make sure that you're aware of them because sometimes not knowing that there are more steps to the process is where organization goes wrong. Um, like doing your laundry. If you do your laundry and you don't do it all the way till folded and put away, if you're leaving it unfolded on the couch or in the dryer, that's not actually doing laundry. That is doing the first two steps of doing laundry, and there are some other steps involved. So um, I want to go over that. But first, I want to remind you that there are some free resources available at morethanorganized.net. Um, you can sign up for five ways to declutter fast, the one-minute mail solution kit, or and or um, simple or tips to simplify your life. All are available at morethanorganized.net, and um, check that out. Okay, so what's the first thing that happens with a project? The very first thing, it's usually an idea, some sort of inkling that there's a thing you might want to try. You might want to do this, or you know you're going to do it. But the very first aspect of that is the idea itself. I like to capture my ideas in a moleskin notebook um, just because <laughs> I have them everywhere. Um, but what I typically do is I have my master list in the front and then the idea when it's just an inkling or an idea, it goes onto that. And then once a week I review that list. Yes. Once a week I glance through it and I pull the things I'm going to be starting or the things I'm going to be working on. And typically even though I look at that every week, I pull the major projects out in, on a quarterly basis so that I have a little bit more flexibility in planning. But I do start it from the list and then into the schedule of some sort um, once I'm ready to work on it. So that second concept is deciding to do it. So once I've determined that, yeah, I've sat on it a few days, it's actually something I'm really interested in, it's gonna help me at this point in the year, if I work on that project um, or I have a block of time here or it's something I'm going to do with the kids and they're off school at this point, then you turn it into an actual project. That's when you put it on your schedule. You actually look at the time, you block out some time, and I always set up a folder for it um, just to capture the information. So see, here's more than organized Mondays. This is a routine, but it started out as a project when I was learning how to do all this stuff. Um, I use the folder to capture ideas, notes that I've acquired, um, jot down little ideas um, to further the project, contact people involved in the project, budgets, any of that kind of stuff. I just have, like having a holding spot for it. So it gets a folder, and then I use that folder during the time block that I set up on the schedule to work on that project. So the folder and the time block are connected. It goes back to its home in my projects currently working on a uh, desktop file next to my desk in between. But once you decide you're doing something, it gets a folder. That way you are limiting the number of things you're working on at once. You aren't creating a folder for every single idea you have because some ideas never come to fruition and you don't need to feel guilty about not finishing every idea that you have on your list, whether it's in a Moleskin, um, Trello, Workflowy, um, a legal pad, wherever you keep your master list, it's okay if it lingers on there a while and you and or you never get around to it, it's fine. But once you decide, it needs to have schedule and a place to keep the things involved. So I tend to have a hard copy file and I tend to send up set up a file on um, the computer, either in Dropbox if it's a group project or in Evernote if it's just something I'm working on so that I have access easily to everything I'm working on. Something else at the, that point is um, no matter where I create the, the project folder, I mirror the system. It's the system, the idea that we're talking about today. So the specifics of which software to use, which kind of file folder, what kind of label, what kinds of things go into it, that's slightly irrelevant 
Um, cause that's personal preference stuff. That's the stuff that keeps you motivated to keep using it. So whatever kind of folder you want, use that, whichever software you're comfortable with, use that. The concept of taking an idea to a schedule, to a holding place for the items necessary for that project, and then to actually doing the project during that time frame, when you're actually in crunch time working on it, you know, so that decide to do it at schedule is part of the structuring of the project, the preparing, the planning of it, and then you're actually doing it. You're in the trenches working on it. I'm actually doing a, a Facebook Live to do the More Than Organized Monday. I'm actually determining the, the um, topics that I'm gonna talk about. I'm actually doing it, the process, the keywords, the loading it, uploading it, uh, downloading it, uploading it back to YouTube and, and cross-channel promoting of it and that kind of thing. It's all part of the project of the doing of it. Okay, so then the next step, is the actual delivery of it, the day I'm actually doing it. So you have the whole plan in place, you know the steps, you have all the pieces of the puzzle, and then there's the time you're actually doing it. Like right now, I'm delivering a more than organized Monday. So this is the delivery of it. Um, and that can look differently. Let's say it's laundry, the actual moving the laundry from the washer to the dryer and then folding it and putting it away, all that stuff is the doing of laundry. Um, Setting up the project of laundry is bringing the hampers to to the laundry room and um, sorting the clothes and that kind of thing, getting ready to do it. And then you're doing it. So there's a little bit of overlap and crossover between each of these steps, but if you see that there's a distinct area for each thing, and it can be applied to laundry, to cooking dinner, to um, running your kids to school, to doing a craft project, to running a big launch in your business. It doesn't matter, it's the same five steps. So once you do it, and you're done with the actual um, deliverable, uh, you, you're, you've done the delivering, you've done that, and then you review. So you take a step back. So when I hit stop on this and I've finished downloading and uploading and, and adding all the titles and descriptions and keywords and things. I'm gonna take a look and see what went really well today and what didn't go so well today. Um, I was a little bit late. Um, sometimes it's that, the weird, trying to do one too many things before you start. And so noting that, so I give myself a little more space to, to do these in the morning. Um, Sometimes someone else's uh, schedule interferes or the availability of technology at a certain given point. So you just wanna note anything that went well or didn't go well. And I also like to note anything that was unnecessary. Like I pre-prepared for this scenario that in you know the last eight months still hasn't happened. So maybe I don't need to worry about that anymore. Maybe that was a concern that whatever has changed in between has taken care of. So for me, that can be a technology thing. Like on my old software that I was using a, a few months ago, I couldn't do certain things. And on this technology, I can do different things. And so maybe my checklist needs to be updated or maybe I need to add a step or delete a step from an older process. And so it streamlines and makes it smoother for the next time I do things. Um, to take it back to a, a more concrete example for most people, the laundry, you know, say you spend a whole bunch of time doing stain fighting and it doesn't really help to get the stains out. Maybe you're better off just scooping a thing of, of um, bleach in there or, or stain fighting powder of some sorts into the overall laundry instead of taking the extra time to stain treat every single stain you see in the laundry. So that can save you half an hour. Um, so that's the kind of thing. Just take a look and, and see what happens. Or maybe your kids have one too many style of pants and so you have too many pants piles and then when you go to put them away, you don't have enough room to put them away. So that's the kind of adjustment. How can you make it easier for next time? Or maybe a hamper is broken. You know, There's a lot of different things that can happen that you might want to adjust for next time. Um, but that's it. That's basically what you want to do. You have an idea, you decide to do it, so you schedule it, you actually do the thing that needs to get done, you deliver it, wrapped up in a package, whether it's a report or folded laundry to where they go. Um, and then you review how it went to see what you can improve for next time. I'm all about being better and doing it better next time and improving the process each and every time. 
So thanks for sticking with me today. Um, I hope you uh, had a chance to get over to morethanorganized.net and pick up a free copy of five ways to declutter fast. It's available on the website there. And let me know if you have any questions or comments. I'm happy to um, address them later. But I'll see you again next Monday for another edition of More Than Organized Monday. Bye. Take care.